So this is Christmas. I wish you a hopeful Christmas. I wish you a great new year. Welcome to the Roger Report podcast, and yes, I am recording this on Christmas Eve because the deal is done. Sunderland, hopefully, are about to change hands. Uh, yeah, the the statement came out today. the The worst kept secret in football, Kirill Louis Dreyfus, has agreed a deal with Stuart Donald to buy his control and stake in the club. So today, I'm joined by Rich Spate to. Just quickly gloss over this because we don't want to take up too much time, do we, Rich, with it being Christmas Eve? No, not not on Christmas Eve. No, no. you're right there, Gav. Yeah, fantastic. Now I've read this. What, what's your immediate thoughts then before we actually go into the statement? How do you feel about the, the news, the timing well, of it? I, relieved, Yeah, I think. Relieved is probably the best word. I mean, we've we've known that it's it's been in train for, for quite a long time. Um, I think in the statement, Louis Dreyfus talks about three months. It's been r- rumbling on. Relieved and uh, glad to see that. Uh, he's got the control and interest in the club, and that's the end of Stuart Donald's tenure, essentially, when this goes through. Yeah, pending EFL approval, of course, but as we just said off air there, um, the fact that he's a shareholder in Marseille probably means that's a formality, and the, the club really mm-hmm. wouldn't have released this statement, would they, um, if they weren't pretty confident that this would go over the line. So this is pretty much all but done, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah um, it, this isn't someone who's new to the football industry. These are serious people, clearly, with serious money mm. uh, it's not like uh, they're going to be the EFL are going to be uh, scratching their heads going where, where where's this uh, where's this dosh come from yeah because we know the Louis Dreyfus company is uh, a multi-billion pound entity and he's he's the heir to that and he's got a, a nice uh, tasty trust fund of his, his own as well which must be lovely for a 23 year old young lad not, not uh, bad is that? I wish when I was 23 someone had let me buy something uh, exactly <laughs> um, <laughs> right we'll quickly run up. everyone who's listened to this probably read the statement but we'll run over each section bit by bit and just give our opinion on it um, the club obviously announced in the, in the, in the, at the very top of the statement there that the the deal's pending AFL approval, and then it goes straight into Stuart Donald's comments. Um, first time we've heard from Stuart Donald in a while, I think. Um, it says, Donald said, it's been no secret that I have been looking for some time to find the right person to take Sunderland forward. Um, and during the course of the last year, there have been a lot of different people wanting to take over. However, even though it is a matter of public record that some of those bidders offered me more money, I'm guessing he's referring to William's story there, um, maybe <laughs> yeah. even Mark Campbell I feel that they offered less to the club and to the community whereas from the early meetings with Kirill his family and advisors I have been greatly impressed with their knowledge and understanding learned over a long period as owners of major football clubs in Belgium and France I believe that experience combined with a good plan will provide a platform for the club to progress and I look forward to watching that progress from afar so I mean, immediately that last line sticks out to me Watching from afar, that's yeah. Donald pretty much saying I'm stepping Absolutely. away. Um, obviously, at the very top of the statement, it says that the agreement has been reached for Dreyfus to acquire Donald's control and stake. That pretty much confirms the rumour, well, the, again, another bad kept rumour, but the rumour that Donald is going to retain a small stake in the club. Um, but I think that line there is him basically mm. saying, I'm, you know, you're not going to say much of me, if any anything of me um, around the club going forward. Um, I do actually... I know it talks cheap, um, but Donald has stuck to his word, I guess, on the type of, of sale he wanted to conduct. Uh, he's he's mm-hmm. been quick to point out there that he didn't. He could have sold it for more money, but he's found somebody he feels can t- can take the club forward in the right manner. Um, and I guess that's one in the eye to to all the people who 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 have sort of championed William Story. You never had a chance of buying this club, and that's clearly who Donald's referring to there. Um, mm. he, what he's saying to people is, all right, we know that the money was on the table. That's been that's been stories mo, hasn't it? Um, I'm offering more money, sell to me. Um, that's Donald saying you might have more money, but you want the right person to buy this club. Yeah, I mean that's to his credit. Yeah, and and to be fair, that's what they were saying early in 2020 when he first said he was going to sell the club, even though it's been for <laughs> sale for considerably longer than that. We all know that. Um, but that was what they were talking about was this custodian model you know finding the right person i think when charlie metfin went on to uh, bbc newcastle i think must have been in february um you know on their breakfast show was it he was talking about the same thing about finding the right people 
Um, so credit to them. They've gone and they've found somebody who has got deep pockets and, crucially, a lot of experience in the, in the football industry, not just through his family. I think um, if you look at the, the article that The Athletic did back at the end of November, it goes quite in depth into like his football education, how he went on football education courses, fo- football coaching and management courses in, I think it was in Yorkshire, in Leeds. He was doing that and mm. that he has got that deep understanding of the football industry. Obviously, Marseille is a, is a, is a big beast to have had to deal with as a, as a family and as, and as a fan. He's a Marseille fan. Um, you know, they've had their ups and downs. They've had their glory years. They've had Bielsa come through and leave. And, you know, they've, they've had all sorts going on. So he's, he's been there, seen it and done it. And hopefully the changes, and, and I think that's one of the most important parts of the, the statement is what, what Louis Dreyfus was saying about how he wants to run the club. Yeah. How he, um, those changes are going to be based on experience, not just speculation, not just saying I've got great plans for the club, etc., etc. We're a great club. You've got to be back in the Premier League. He's setting out the changes that are going to be put in place to 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 create that. Yeah, obviously because the EFL approval is pending, the the statement sort of lacking in detail. There's no sort of meat on the bones mm. in terms of who's he bringing in, what's the what's the actual plan. But he does refer to um, his sort of vision for the football club. So we'll, we'll look at that now. Um, it starts with what Louis Dreyfus said. First, I would like to thank Stuart Donald for his integrity and reasonableness over the last three months. So, yeah, so th- that this this has taken three months. I think that's about standard, maybe maybe, maybe quicker than normal for a takeover. Probably feels like longer because we've been talking about it that much. Um, but three well, months, I mean, yeah. in the context, in the context, and he does refer to the context, the economic and, you yeah. know, the social, oh, of course, yeah. medical <laughs> situation that's going on, on along around the world it hasn't been conducive to getting people in rooms thrashing things out mm-hmm. um but you know a couple of deals have uh, managed to emerge in the last yeah. uh, in the last few hours uh, that have required a little bit of uh, time and a little bit of patience and uh seem to have got there eventually mm. uh, yeah so he goes on um over the last three months which has led me to having the opportunity to take a control and stake in Sunday FC I am fully aware of the efforts undertaken by the current ownership and board to protect the viability of the club and respect the difficulty of this task, given Sunderland's recent past and current economic climate. Um, Then he goes on to talk about the EFL's approval. Uh, Nonetheless, it would be remiss of me at this stage not to emphasise what an enormous honour it would be for me to become involved with such a historic club in a city renowned for its rich football culture going back to 1879. That'll kick up the fuss with a couple, I reckon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, many will be aware of my family. <laughs> <laughs> many will be aware of my family connections to the industry, and in acquiring Sunday FC, I understand the responsibility that's placed upon me as the custodian of the club's future. Um, so yeah, that's that's the the fluffy stuff out the way. Then he goes on to talk about his um, his sort of vision vision for the club. Moving forward, we have a long term mm-hmm. strategy which integrates Sunderland's proud traditions with a modern structure and approach. Uh, we will seek to be at the frontier of research and innovation in all performance domains and place great emphasis on player development and the team style of play. We want to create a team that is entertaining to watch and that embodies the spirit um, and the culture of those who attend, thereby reconnecting the team with its fan base, whose support will be so vital to our success. So we'll just stop there for a second. Um, he recognises the, uh, I, I guess, the... The, the hunger from support as for the for the football to be good really uh, uh, and yeah. th- that's that's massive because and people might think well he's an owner he, he's not going to have that much influence on the actual football side of things um and while that might be true um you still would like to think that these things start from the top so if the if the owner of the football club has a has a belief and a mm-hmm. mindset that's going to run right the way through um and we've obviously seen that in recent weeks with the appointment of Speakman and Lee Johnson They've both talked up pretty much the same things Dreyfus has here. The um, yeah. yeah, you can you can sort of you can you can work that one out for yourself. But it it would appear that those appointments were made with this this change in mind. Um, how important do you think that is? Then just the the, the importance of um, obviously all owners talk about reconnecting with fans and that, that's just standard stuff. But the 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 emphasis on player development and style of play and you know that that's important, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it, it 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 definitely is. I mean, Lee Johnson um, on the club's podcast yesterday was talking about having a philosophy um, that runs throughout the entire club, and if that doesn't involve the the chairman, 
uh, then you got a problem. And, and obviously this has been led by the new chairman. Um, and he was talking about it going, you know, all the way from top to bottom involving, you know, the, the, the chef, the cleaners, the, the every everyone at the club pulling in the in the right and in the same direction and implementing this new philosophy. Um, we've seen glimpses of it in just in the short while that Lee John, Johnson has been in charge. We've heard um, Christian Speakman uh, speaking very, very well along these same lines, and he's got a track record that backs up the the, the smart words he's been saying. Um, and I think it was really uh, interesting, some of, some of the little tidbits that we've um, been able to, to glean through Rook Report in the, in the last few hours, really, about um, the, the, the new focus on that philosophy and on the, the kind of the radical transformation uh, that's going to come in uh, with, you know, uh, creating that conveyor belt uh, of talent from the academy to the first team. Um, talk of, you know, three players in each position and a, and a new a new team of analysts, which is really exciting that, you know, we're going to be putting ourselves right at the forefront of kind of the data revolution in football, uh, which will hopefully help us to identify the talent both kind of inside the club and outside the club because there are there are talented players inside the club already mm. and it's going to be about making the best use of them as well as bringing in you know some some players uh soon and over the longer term johnson yesterday was talking about uh, the loan market that him and christian speakman have been meeting at length about about um their recruitment strategy over the next few weeks uh, and hopefully the funds will be in place uh, to ensure that we can pay, pay loan fees or whatever's needed to uh, attract some of the best uh, available young talent uh, in England uh, and you know the rest of the UK um, over the over the next few weeks. Yeah, and the the other side of this is that um, so something Sunderland have even when we were in the Premier League and we had all of that money behind us, we never had a proper philosophy for recruitment, youth football. I mean, obviously having a lot of money sloshing around the club helps you to do deals and sort of. Um, you know, we will have had scouts in in Europe and competing for young players, um, and we would have had the money to to be able to to make ourselves comp- competitive. But the, this this sort of what you what we're hearing about now it indicates that we're we're about to do something. Uh, clubs like Brentford are doing it to an extent, but it mm-hmm. feels like that on roids to me. It's like we're we're going to go in, mm-hmm. we're going to go and do this properly. But there's the, and the, the, there's going to be a level of investment in something which we've kind of neglected yeah I, I don't think this kid's playing at it no clearly from his statement this isn't a, this isn't a hobby you know you might people might think oh he's 23 years old but you gotta remember some of the the major global businesses that have been built by by lads in their 20s who've graduated from harvard over the last 20 years you know some of the literally the the, the biggest companies in the world um and you know the, people don't get rich and stay rich as families by uh, throwing their money at, at white elephant projects, and it sounds like with the youth development, that's actually a business investment. Mm. It's not a fun. It's not for fun. It's not a sporting challenge, as as previous owners have called the ownership of of of, of Sunderland Football Club. It it is that custodian model, that long term model, and I love the idea of getting into the culture of us as fans because really, I mean, this is one club where bringing through our own players from from the youth team um from the local area who get it who get us who are part of us that's that's core to what we are as a football club mm. and what we should be as a football club and when we've lost our identity over the last decade the the periods that it's been at its worst has been when we haven't had that kind of core of kids who've come through the ranks at the club and know it inside out it's been when we've brought in journeymen mm-hmm. who've been after a payday and then of have fucked off basically. Yeah. So, um, so that you know, it's music to my ears. It's an early Christmas present for all of us. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 fantastic. It's just you know, obviously, it's got to get over the line with the the AFL. But you know, there are dodgier people who've gone through their 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 um, owners and directors test than than um, than Curl Louis Dreyfus. Yeah, yeah. It was. I think it was important to get this over the line before the new year really because like you've just touched on mm. january's huge now i mean not trying to delve too deep into a different topic here but the january transfer window right around the corner it's pretty clear that we're lacking and johnson's already said that christian speakman's already said that um so getting this over the line and done before the new year allows those 
in charge of the football side of the club, like Speakman, you know, it, it kind of takes the brakes off a bit and it's like, right, you can, you can go head on into what you need to do now. Um, and I'm not expecting them to spend fortunes. I don't even think they'll spend anything, if I'm honest. But it, they'll probably look to bring in um, young players who can make a difference to this squad. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously not having the takeover hanging over your head is going to be massive in terms of your ability to do your job properly, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously the environment's changing by the, the hour at the minute in terms of what it means to be able to bring players in from other countries, what it means to be able to invest money from other countries here. And with that being cleared up as well, I think that does take a little bit of the uncertainty away. It might not be ideal. It might not. Ma- it means we can't go out and find that gem in the Belgian second division and bring him over, for mm. example. Um, but it, it does mean that we can we can use a little bit of our financial muscle I know we've got FFP, I know we've got wage caps, etc. to think about, but there are ways and means with promotion bonuses, with loan fees, etc. that you can you can um you know still make headway if you've got the the muscle behind and, and, and again and I think Speakman has talked about this as well, it's selling the vision. And I think that's a big thing for a player coming in, in in January possibly, is yeah, this isn't Sunderland ambling along with Phil Parkinson. Uh, as manager and and uh, and hoping this is Sunderland seriously pushing back up the leagues now yeah. and and obviously the 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 proof of the pudding will be in the eating but it's it's it, the pudding's there you know it's yeah. on the table re- ready to uh, get tucked <laughs> into uh, right at the end of the statement the club are pr- they give a time scale actually which I think is the first mm. time we've had one for for takeover. I can't ever remember them put anything being any sort of time scales being put in it officially. Um, no. But they, yeah, I'll read this out. Documentation relating to the deal has been lodged today with the EFL for their scrutiny, and the club recognises that the EFL need to approve all aspects of the transaction and business plan going forward before a change of control. Given the time of the year, that process is not expected to conclude until mid January, until which point there will be no f- further public comment from Sunderland FC or Carol Louis Dreyfus. So, um, yeah, so that, 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 to be honest, I'm, I'm, Glad to read that they didn't have to put that bit in, but it at least gives fans a, an idea of you know you can sort of relax. You can mm-hmm. this is happening. We've got it under control. Just because nothing official's been announced like a week after this this original statement doesn't mean it's fell through. It's like you know we we need time. Um, and that's them saying that, isn't it? It's 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 well, it's good to see. It's out of their hands. Yeah, to be fair, well, that's it as well. If yeah, it's, the, if that's it... them saying that's basically them saying that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's down the EFL. The EFL have got uh, a lot on their plate. Whether we'll ever get back to football this season is an open question. Yeah, they've got to deal with that. They've got to deal with what's going on or not going on at at Wigan and at Charlton and in in, in other places as well. And I know they've gone through a significant amount of change over the last couple of months, bringing in new chief executive, etc. So um, we are now in the in the in the hands of of um, the the league and the decision makers there but it's a process um and it's the rules are set down they're there for people to go and read what Louis Dreyfus has got to satisfy to be able to take control of the club and to get that share in the EFL um that's basically what the test is is there to do is to make mm. sure that the people who are joining the EFL because the EFL is a is an owners club for football clubs and outside the Premier League yeah. um if he's going to be allowed to join them uh, it, it's up to them, but the, there really shouldn't be any any hurdles uh, that he can't he can't get over. No. Um, so it's it is it's extremely positive, and it's a fantastic uh, way to end our year, our year of anxiety and uncertainty and anger and kind of disappointment and debate and a lot of kind of wrangling between fans who have got different ideas about the future of the club. This is the future of the club now, so I think it's just time. You know, it's it's Christmas. It's time for everyone to pull together and goodwill to all men and 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 women as well. And and hopefully we'll be able to move um move forward together as a fan yeah. base because that's really all all that we want really is not to spend time arguing over the minutiae of 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 potential deals and what we we do and don't want. We just want to move forward and see our team perform on the pitch, develop as a club, and and move back back where we belong really yeah it's a good place to end it i think couldn't say about myself uh yeah so thanks everyone for listening i know this has been short and sweet but we don't want to take up too much of your christmas yeah 
just to say thank you as well to everyone who's donated to our um our sponsors um the Sunderland community Absolutely, soup kitchen yeah. over over the past few weeks it's been an absolute wonderful thing to see that that total just going up and up and up yeah. over 27,000 uh pounds i haven't actually checked it this afternoon because of everything that's been going on <laughs> but um it's just wonderful and the and the people of our city and our region and the fan base worldwide have really stood up and it will really really help people yeah uh, you know everything that andrea does and the volunteers do down there is squarely aimed at feeding the poorest people in in the city so um it's it's brilliant so thank you thank you all merry christmas nadolly clawen yeah thank you thank you very much everybody and uh yeah we'll catch you we'll catch you back probably before the new year i would imagine providing the Saturn game goes ahead anyways we might be back with a player rating show but we will see we will see because <laughs> things can change between now and then but if we don't speak to you then uh yeah enjoy your christmas thank you very much uh-huh.